What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Locomotion Show. My name is Z and this is episode two. In episode one, we took a dive into human evolution and we looked at just how adaptable the human system is. And we can see how so many of the aspects of who we are as humans, from our metabolic changes that have occurred inside to the physical changes that we can see in the mirror, are all a product of how we've responded to nature and how nature has shaped our bodies and how we've adapted in such a way that we can not just survive in it, but thrive amongst it. Living in the scientific era that we live in, we now have such a great understanding of just how that evolutionary process works. How does the body internalize external forces and figures out how to make these changes so that we can continually adapt and evolve in the direction that we want. As athletes, that's something that we really want to wrap our heads around because when we can understand how the body processes load, then we can use that to shape our bodies, to improve our athleticism, to resolve our pain, and ultimately to operate as the most high-performing version of ourselves. Chief among those forces is load. Load is just simply the mechanical force that's placed on the body because we live in a gravity environment. Every time that we walk, our foot collides with the ground and our heel, our forefoot, and all of the muscles, bones, and tendons upstream experience mechanical loading as a result of gravity and the force of our body crashing into the ground. The thing is, that loading process is critical to sending information to our body to help it remodel in ways that allow us to walk without breaking our legs or feeling fatigued. I've heard it said that load is the language of our cells, and I love that. I think that is such a succinct way for us to think about our interaction with the outside world and how the experience of crashing into the ground, which could be in the form of running or walking or weightlifting, can really help to reshape our bodies. Now, we already know this. You've already experienced this. Anybody who's ever strength trained has noticed how you go into the gym, you pick up a heavy object, you do it a couple of times, the next day you might feel sore, but the day after that, you might feel a touch stronger. And when you do that over a period of weeks and months, your muscles grow and you see physical changes in your body. And that's great. That's the same principle that we're looking to expand upon. Because what you might not know is that while muscles grow very, very quickly, every other element in your body is equally adaptable. It might not happen quite as quickly and it might not be visible. For example, increases in bone density are really meaningful and important for our life on the planet, but they're not visible. Increases in tendon capacity, tendon stiffness, fascia thickness, all of these changes occur below the surface. They're not visible, but they're critical to our athletic performance. So load is the language of our cells and what we've got to figure out is how do we load our bodies in healthy ways in order to get the outcomes that we want. But here's the flip side and the part that we don't often want to talk about is that just as much as we are adaptable to load, we are adaptable to not being loaded. Just as our body is sensitive to laying down new tissue to manage load, it's also going to dissolve tissue that's not being used. So when we live in a world where we start to pad our bodies and insulate it from load, we can see a rapid degradation in the quality of our tissues. Before we take the deep dive into the science of how it works, let's look at an example that maybe a lot of us have heard about that really illustrates how sensitive our bodies are to load or to a lack of load. I'm thinking about astronauts. So when astronauts come back from space, it's very common that they break their legs just walking down the street doing normal everyday things. And why does that happen? Because when an astronaut is in space, they're in an environment where there is no gravity. And in the absence of gravity, there's an absence of load on their bones. And it's remarkable to think that our bones will start to make those changes and lose density, not in the course of a generation or two, but in the course of just a few weeks or months. So how does this happen? It happens through a process called mechanotransduction. Mechanotransduction is just a really big word for the way in which our body, specifically our extracellular matrix, our bones and tissues, how they can interpret these external forces and 
make changes internally that allow the body to tolerate these forces better in the future. In fact, we have a whole system that's largely independent of the brain that interprets load, vibration, speed, movement pattern, and gets to work remodeling the body according to these forces. And we have specific cells in our body that are responsible for the constant maintenance of our bones and tissues, which we often think about as just being inert calcium deposits, but they're not. They're very much living tissues that are very, very responsive to how we use them. This process of mechanotransduction is the foundation for several laws that are really well established in science that have studied how individual parts of our body respond. So Davis's law is a law that is the science behind how our soft tissues, our ligaments, our tendons, our fascia remodel according to load. And then there's the corollary for our bones, which is called Wolf's Law. And Wolf's Law is essentially the study of how our bones respond to the mechanical forces that they experience. All of this to say that our body is sensitive not just in evolutionary time, but also within our lifetime, in fact, within weeks and months, to the processes and the loads that we apply to it. The reason all this matters is that it really helps us to understand that our bodies are only gonna be as resilient as the forces that we put on them. And as we start to protect our bodies from these forces, we should expect that we'll lose that corresponding capacity. Really, it's just simply the law of evolution. It's how we continue to navigate the world around us by interpreting the forces that it demands of us and making adaptations to meet those demands. To my mind, the padded shoe revolution is a shining example of this very risky experiment that manufacturers are conducting on the human body. Early shoe manufacturers began by introducing padding into shoes to make running more comfortable and to make it accessible to more people. But today, modern shoe design has gone off the rails. And now we have these incredibly padded shoes that look like giant marshmallows under our feet that are all but eliminating the loads of running and making it feel like you're running on a cloud. Now, all of that sounds nice, and if you've tried them out, it probably feels really nice too. But the reality is, nobody actually knows what the long-term consequences of completely changing the body's experience of doing its most essential athletic movement, running, and doing it in this incredibly padded environment. The thing to remember is that when we protect our bodies or strip load away from our bodies, we're also stripping load tolerance away from our bodies. It's the downside of being a biological organism. It's sort of our reverse adaptation. When we load our bodies, we get stronger, but when we remove that load, we lose that capacity. Ultimately, it takes a lot of work for our body to maintain our tissues. It's the process of upkeep. We have a whole system in our extracellular matrix that's dedicated to this process of maintaining our tissues. In fact, we even have a particular enzyme whose job it is to disintegrate and break down tissues that we're not using. So as soon as we stop giving our body the stimulus to maintain, we should expect that it's going to lose that capacity. And that's exactly what we learn through the study of astronauts when they return back to planet Earth. Our bodies are so incredibly intelligent. They're reading not just the load, but the magnitude, the pattern, and shape of that load. And human beings have been colliding with the ground for millions of years. But now some manufacturers are deciding that we shouldn't do that, that we need a squishy pillow under our feet in order to run. And nobody really knows what the long-term consequences of doing that are and how we're remodeling our bodies, not just for ourselves, but for all subsequent generations. It's going to be very, very difficult to reclaim what we might now be eroding. In the world of machines, there's a concept that we're very familiar with. It's the concept of wear and tear. So if you buy a car and you drive it off the lot, as soon as you hit the brakes, you're starting to strip some of the life off the brake pad that's eventually gonna need to be replaced. A lot of times, we end up applying that type of thinking to our bodies, and we think that we gotta protect our bodies from loading and wear, because if we do that, we're going to wear it out. But our bodies aren't like machines. They're not like machines at all. They're much more like plants than they're like machines. When a plant is damaged, it photosynthesizes, it regenerates, and that's exactly how it works with our body. A better principle for our bodies might be wear and repair. We see that all the time. Imagine if you took your car and you placed it in the garage, you shut the garage and left it there for a month. 
the car would see the least amount of wear and therefore maintain its value and its shape the best. Imagine lying in bed for a month. Imagine what kind of shape your body would be in after you did that. Our bodies are so different and we have to get back to understanding that our bodies need use. They need to interpret the world around them to experience nature, the loads and forces that come with living outside in order to constantly remodel. And of course, that's the process of training. Whether you're training for a marathon, you want to put those miles in so that your body gets that stimulus and can develop that aerobic capacity to go further and further. Another example that a lot of us have experienced is very similar to putting a car in the garage. So I'm talking about surgery. If you have surgery, I have surgery on my shoulder about two years ago. I was casted for about six weeks. And when you come out of the cast, your tissues that are required to move the shoulder have regrown. And that's why they're taking the cast off. You're now ready to start moving. But what do you notice? You notice that your joint has locked up, that it's become so stiff. Why is that? That's because your body has been busy at work repairing itself, but it's been doing that without any information. What do I mean by no information? It hasn't been able to move and use the shoulder in the normal ways. And as a result, it's laid down all of this tissue in a disorganized way. Tissue is very directional. So when tissue is laid down, your body is constantly interpreting how to lay it down, how much of it to lay it down, how to organize that tissue according to how you use the joint. If you're not using the joint, that tissue is gonna be a big crisscross mess. That's exactly what happens to us after surgery and most of physical therapy is actually undoing the damage that our body experienced by being isolated from load and movement as it would naturally be accustomed to. Load is critical to our athletic development, but it's not just about how much load we apply. It's not good enough to just go into the gym, grab some heavy objects and start throwing them around and expect that because I got stronger and I got big muscles, I'm now patterning the movement the way I need. Our body is so much more intelligent than that. And what we learn by studying the nervous system is that our body is much more preoccupied with the pattern and shape of our movement than it is how much force we can apply to that movement. Fascia as an organ is the organ that's probably most singularly dedicated to how we organize movement. And fascia is far more innervated than muscle tissue, about six times more innervated. So what that tells us is that our body and our brains are primarily concerned with movement patterning over the production of maximum force. So that's why it's so key to really think about how we evolve to move and make sure that we're patterning loads in those orientations. Because when we do that, we're reinforcing these natural patterns of human movement that have been a part of our repertoire from the beginning. That concludes episode two. In the next episode, we're gonna take a little bit of a different tack and we're gonna look at mindset. We're gonna look at some of the mental and emotional factors that can have a huge impact on whether we train, how we train, and the stories that we tell ourselves about training and how all of that is connected to our modern times and the ways in which exercise is now so separate from the rest of our lives and we are struggling with how we fit it into our lives. We're gonna take a deep dive into that topic and really help you create a happy, healthy relationship with exercise and training to allow you to evolve into the athlete that you wanna be. Okay, we'll see you next time. Hopefully you enjoyed this content. If you did, we'd love it. If you'd like, subscribe, share it, do all that good stuff that enables us to grow this channel and start this movement. All right, we'll see you out there. Thank you.